this week in Sail Hub, we are talking about blocks. So we've got plain bearing blocks to talk about, ball bearing blocks, there's needle bearing blocks, basically loads of blocks. We're going to be covering how to use them and where to use them. We've got the limitations to think about as well. Performance characteristics. And then the question which many sailors would ask, why do we call this a block? It's a pulley, right? It's a block. It's a pulley. <laughs> So let's kick off by covering the different bearings across blocks. Breaking it down into three different bearing types. You've got your traditional bush bearing, you've got your ball bearings, and you've got... Needle roller bearings? Needle roller bearings. Yeah. So now we've got those three sorted out, we've got to think about the load that we're going to put through the block. So basically on a boat, again, three things. So basically, high load, so that's like, say, a halyard, which is on a constant high load. Fast movement, which would be, say, a jib sheet or something like that. And you got dynamic load. Yeah, so that's like a shock load. So that's, let's say, I don't know, something that's got to put up with a jibe from a... Crash a, jibe. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> let's kick off by diving into high load. Okay, so high loads, the first thing we would do is remove the ball bearing from the situation. Ball bearings are really good. They have very little friction, but the reality is they've got small contact points. So in high load situations, especially static ones, they will deform and they basically become like an egg. So even with like Tolon and Acetal, which are like the best sort of... That's what the ball bearings are made of. Yeah, yeah, they're sort of best ones for the job. They will deform under high static load. So remove that and it leaves us with the plain bearing bush and it leaves us with the needle roller bearings. And so they can both do the job, obviously. Yep. Why would you pick one over the other? Well, one reason would be cost for, for definite <laughs> in that the needle roller bearing is going to cost somewhere around four or five times the price of, a, of the equivalent bush bearing, let's say. So that's a big player. Now, if you really need lack of friction, that's where the bearing comes in, the needle roller bearing. And that's really good. There's obviously a price to pay with this straightforward bush. And that is friction. If you were wanting to trim on a little bit more halyard or trim on a little bit more cunningham, okay. when you're just doing small fine adjustments and the likes, it, it gets a bit jerky. So and that's, that's where the bearings easy. come in if you're racing and you want that little bit of movement in your sails. Okay, so that moves us on quite nicely to fast loads or movement loads. Yeah. So movement loads, again, they're one which we would probably... Everyone will work for, for fast movements, there's no question. But if you're wanting those nice easy to adjust things, and let's say you're doing jib sheets or something like that, or spinnaker sheets, you really want to move things just a little bit. Friction can make things a bit jerky, and if you don't want that, the first one to remove would be the plane bearing block, and then you're left with the roller bearing block, and you're left with the needle roller bearing block. The ball bearing and the needle roller. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so many balls! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> only two actually. <laughs> so just one thing just to cover up which of them two you would choose. The basics of it probably come down to the size of your boat and your sail area. Because balls will eventually misshapen. If they're moving more, they will work better. And they're less likely to misshape. But effectively if you've got a massive sail area or heavy displacement boat, the balls may well crush. The needle roller bearings have a larger surface area. That is why they deal with high loads better. Yeah, so the loads spread more evenly. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And thirdly, you have got dynamic load. Yeah, so dynamic load is kind of, without a doubt, the biggest load on a boat. And it's kind of when things start exploding, you know, those crash dives and like, whoa, my block's just exploded. Not cool. So simplicity is often best. Uh, and if we take it back to, you know, old days with old wooden ships and the likes, everything was built to last. And so literally what they had was wooden blocks to run their ropes through. And that's where the term block came from. So basically, if we look at a friction ring, this is a friction ring. It's an aluminium donut ring, which the rope runs through like this. This is derived from the wooden block. We'll talk about these in another video. We've got something lined up telling you where to use them and how to use them. But back to dynamic loads, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so dynamic loads, we want simplicity. Of course, we've already talked about ball bearings and the downside of ball bearings. It's probably going to squash. That's just not good. And it might even explode. You never know your luck. So then we've got needle roller bearings. Needle roller bearings are really good under dynamic load because they've got good surface contact. And that's, that's a good thing. But... I think the best block to use under dynamic loads is 
the basic shave block. It may have more friction, but there's no moving parts really, just, just one. The good old block. Yeah, just so much less to go wrong. That's that. So we've covered all the three different load types on a boat in terms of where you'd use blocks. Is there anything else that you would discuss with blocks? Yeah, there's there's one other thing. I mean, we've all just been talking about the, the primary bearing in a block. Yeah. Uh, the, the primary bearing is the one that takes the load it's intended to take. So a block is designed to pull, let's say, this way. So that's the use of its primary bearing. But as we have them coming up from mass and whatnot, they end up pulling in angles like this as well. So what we end up is with thrust on the sheave, or the pulley, let's say. And as that wants to cant it over, let's say, or twist it inside the, the cheeks of the block, that creates more friction and it wears things out. And we end up eventually with sheaves wearing on the inside of the cheeks and then the friction becomes so massive that it's really not working as a block at all. And that's the same with ball bearings, needle bearings. Yeah. They're all going to wear eventually with the different frictions. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So what we have is thrust bearings that go in on the side. So they're like balls. This is a... It's Tiny a dyne little balls. Yeah, so this is a Dyneema block. We'll, we'll forget the fact it's Dyneema because the, the theory is the same. So this is a bush block and it's got loads of ball bearings on the side and on this side. And they stop the sheave from twisting. Now that basically means that the force of the bush is always landing on the, the central axis pin equally. So they last a lot longer, a hell of a lot longer. And even when they start to wear out, there's less twist. So these bearings just help to remove a lot of that friction that you would kind of associate with a, a block that's on its way out, let's say. So if you could afford it, if you're buying all three different bearing types, would you buy the ones with these thrust bearings in them too? Yeah, so basically all needle roller bearings through their nature, they've already got those thrust bearings in them. Ball bearings don't have to, but I would definitely buy them because those thrust bearings mean that the whole bulk will last a bit longer. And when it comes to the standard bush, yeah, if you get them with those thrust bearings in them too, they'll just last a lot longer and it really, really reduces the friction. So longevity. Yeah. So for me... Yeah, I was going to ask you... Go on. If you could have one block on board, yeah. obviously more than one, but one type of block on board, what would it be? Now, I'm not a racer, although I do like to tune the boat. I... He likes to tune the boat. <laughs> I do. So for me, like, I would love to have these, but the cost benefit's just not there for me. So needle roll bearings would be my choice. And if I couldn't have those, which we won't have those, I'd definitely, definitely go for the bush with the two thrust bearings. Definitely. Fantastic. Bush block with thrust bearings. There you go. There you go. That's our top pick. We'll leave some links to some of those in the bottom as well, in the description. And a big shout out to this week's sponsor, which is marinechandleroo.com. These guys have kicked us out with this gear to demonstrate to you guys today. Yeah, super knowledgeable guys. And they've also got a walk-in channelry. They really know what they're talking about. You're speaking to real sailors on the end of the phone. That's nice to know. And yeah, aside from that, we'll see you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe this video because it is what keeps us ticking along. Every little helps. Thanks, guys. <laughs>